think of an electric vehicle, what comes to mind? Saving money on gas? Being green? But what about supporting the smart grid? The future of electric vehicles will mean a lot more than just reducing carbon emissions and less time at the gas pump. EVs and EV charging stations will be an important part of a smart energy ecosystem that will help decarbonize mobility and support grid digitization and stabilization. But how do we get there? By increasing the power density and efficiency in our EV charging applications. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Daniel Dalpias from Infineon and I explore the topologies of typical EV charging systems, why power conversion is key to the future of EV charging, and the benefits that the Easy Power product family from Infineon can bring to EV charging stations. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. Hi, Daniel. Thank you so much for joining me. Hi, Emilia. Thanks for having me in the show today. I'm glad to participate and have the chance to discuss this exciting topic with you. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about how we can maximize high power density and efficiency in EV charging applications today. But Daniel, before we dig into the details, can you set the stage for us and describe the overall EV charger landscape? Sure. EV charging is a hot topic right now, especially as more drivers start considering an electric vehicle as their new car. So having more high power chargers available to maximize charging speed and having the charging stations running more efficiently will certainly bolster the EV acceptance. And we from Infineon, we cover the complete EV charger landscape from AC chargers with a focus on the control, connectivity, security, and sensing to DC fast charger solutions where the power conversion systems play an important role as key enabler for electrification. And it is in the DC fast chargers that we have solutions that can maximize high power density along with efficiency improvements. Fantastic. Now, Daniel, what kind of trends are you seeing in this space? And how do you see these trends evolving over time? That's a good question. And uh, I guess it is safe to say that the EV charging trends are unique in the market and it keeps evolving as the EV adoption increase. I always like to give this example, the number of charging cycles in which a charging station is expected to support every day is just becoming bigger as there are more EVs on the streets and the charging speeds becomes faster. So today it is expected that every, let me say 30 minutes or so, a different vehicle will approach the charger station and get connected. Then the new charger cycle starts. So this repeats many times during the day. And the trend is that this number gets higher as more drivers switch to EV and DC fast chargers becomes more powerful. Of course, on the top of it, it is expected that the charger stations become more efficient reliable, and last but not least, also capable to support a wide output voltage range. When we look ahead in the near future, we see bidirectionality as one of the main trends, which will make possible to provide backup power to buildings or specific loads, as an example, and will certainly help to improve the grid resiliency. Okay, so we're going to be seeing EV chargers as part of a bigger smart grid ecosystem, right? Absolutely. As I said before, bidirectionality will play an important role as the grid becomes smart and decentralized. EV chargers will be part of the future you know, energy ecosystem, which will have uh, renewable energies and energy storage systems all connected. The bidirectional chargers will basically allow the drivers to use their EVs 
as a mobile battery storage, making possible to provide power back to the grid and also manage the way they consume energy from the grid. That makes sense. Now, what does a typical DC EV charger system look like? That's a good question. And in this slide, we can see a DC charger, typical block diagram, where a DC charger systems will convert an incoming three-phase AC power from the grid into a DC voltage required by the EV's battery. This is the first light green box we see on the center of the slide, which says power conversion on the top. Then below, we can see two other light green boxes, which are representing the power control unit and the central control unit, which are responsible for controlling the power conversion stage and also establish a communication channel between the charger station and the vehicle. So vehicle information is exchanged and owner data is communicated through a secure data channel for billing purpose. As I mentioned at the beginning, Infineon solutions go beyond power semiconductors, and we cover all these three stages with different products and technology that support connectivity, security, sensing, and protection as well. So can we take a closer look at that power conversion block? Sure. The power conversion system basically consists of a three-phase PFC stage plus a DC-DC converter. In this slide, we highlight inside of these orange boxes the main or should I say the most common topologies used in each stage. The selection of the topology depends on the requirements from the final application and of course also you know, on the charger capabilities. The three primary concerns in DC charger systems are minimizing cooling efforts, provide high power density along with high efficiency, plus reduce the overall size and system costs. So compact designs must consider high switching speed components in order to be able to reduce the size of the magnetic components. Always with scalability and flexibility in mind so that the design can be used as a building block and this building block is stacked up to achieve high DC output power levels. So, Daniel, where do discrete solutions, module solutions, and gate driver solutions fit into the overall EV charging landscape? It is a mix. So, today we see different solutions being used out there. And the designs varies from using discrete components to power modules. However, as the trend to go higher in power becomes clear, we see more new designs leaning towards power modules, especially as the design engineers can shorter the bill of material and at the same time simplify the design by using less components to achieve high power building blocks. What we see in this slide is an overview and some suggestions or recommendations. I want to make it clear that it may vary or change from design to design. But here we try to somehow map the building blocks or subunits versus our product offering. When we look at the bottom or the first line, we have the 20 kilowatt or even the 30 kilowatt. And most of the chargers in this power range are designed based on discrete components. As the power goes up, and most of the DC chargers today use building blocks of 50, sometimes 75 kilowatt, then power modules become preferable. And this same building block of 50 to 75 kilowatt can be used to achieve higher powers above 100 kilowatt by simply stacking them up. And on the third column, here on this slide, we show our gate driver solutions, which are recommended to be used with our switches, both discrete or module solutions. So what solutions does Infineon have to help solve these issues? Infineon have a wide portfolio of power semiconductors from discrete to different power modules, but our easy product family is the one which is the benchmark package for most of the emerge applications, including EV charging. So why is that? Okay, and it all goes down to flexibility and scalability. 
with the addition of the easy 4b package the easy product line now consists of four different sizes and they all share the same concept of base plateless solution they all have the same thickness of 12 millimeter and they all have a flexible pin grid which helps with pcb designs and can support special application requirements in terms of pinout. These devices are available with different dye technologies, including our CoolSeq MOSFET technology. And they come in different topologies and also different voltage classes from 600 volts all the way up to 2000 volts. So let's talk about how we can achieve high power density without sacrificing manufacturability. That's another advantage we see from these easy devices. And it's possible because the easy power modules have this internal layout flexibility, which no other power module can offer. And it allows us to use pretty much the internal space available to populate with the semiconductor chips. On this slide, we can see how the device looks like, what the main parts are inside of the, the easy device. And it is possible to see several dies which can be arranged in different topologies. And these multiple dies or several dies are integrated into a single module, making the final solution very compact. Then there is an interconnection between the dies and the DBC substrate material. And the same dies are connected to the external PCBs via these long pins. Having these pins placed as close as possible to the dies also helps to improve performance and make the package a great solution for our CoolSeq MOSFET technology. The devices are fully isolated and at the same time have a very high thermal conductivity which also helps to achieve high power density. And last but not least, they can be mounted on both the top or bottom side of the PCB, which provides even more flexibility. So in this slide here, we have our standard easy silicon carbide MOSFET portfolio in 1200 volts. These are all catalog devices which are released and available for mass production. As we can see here, it comes in different topologies, like a half bridge, age bridge, six pack, and many more. But also it comes with a wide range of RDS ohm specification, okay, that varies from 55 milliohms down to two milliohms. If we look at the half bridge topology, as an example, we have devices starting at 55 milliohms, with the FF55 MR12 W1 M1H, which comes in the easy 1B, the smaller version or the smaller package. And it goes down to 2 milliohms with our FF2, which comes in the easy 3B package. The 2 milliohms device is the best in class product for such kind of base plateless solution available today. So what if my audience needs a customized solution? Can Infineon also help them here? We can certainly support chains and custom designs, especially with the easy product line. With our easy product family, we can provide custom solutions or new solutions which are not available yet as a catalog device. And we can accomplish this in a very short time. So this potential new solution could be a change in the topology, it could be the integration of components or simply a selection of a different dye technology. Typically, we can provide early engineering prototypes in a very short time and we can have this potential new solution available for mass production. I would say around after six months, the design is frozen. So because we value our customers' special requirements, we understand that by offering such flexibility, we can perfectly support their needs and make their success our success. Fantastic. Well, Daniel, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you. Thank you very much. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Infineon. 
for Chalk Talks. I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.